there, I'm Sherry Smotherman Short from Painless Blog Analytics. Have you ever looked at Google Analytics and had your heart stop because your traffic is dropping? I know I have many times. But before you panic, you need to compare your time frames to last year. Most blogs have some seasonality to their traffic patterns. For example, I don't get much traffic to my Cub Scout blog in July because many Cub Scout packs don't meet during July. I also don't get much traffic over Easter weekend, but my friend Mel's post with her ha recipe for ham gravy does. So it's always good to compare this year's traffic with last year's traffic. And I'll show you how. When you first open Google Analytics, you're going to be on your home page. What you need to do is click on Audience and then Overview. This is defaulting to the last seven complete days. For example, today is actually July 14th, but it's not included in the default date range because it's not a full day. I can change that to show you just today, which is kind of cool actually, because you can see the number of visitors that you have by hour. Now if you notice, I have, or I had, 13 visitors at 3 a.m. And I just got to say, y'all are some hardcore Cub Scout leaders looking at this site at 3 in the morning. But I digress. I'm going to switch this back to 7 days. And what you can do is I can compare these 7 days to the previous period. Now the way we do a comparison is to click this little box here. And then it, it defaults to previous period. And when you click apply, well before you click apply you can see that your current time frame is in blue, and then the previous period is in orange. So it starts it's Sunday through Saturday, Sunday through Saturday. I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. Now, when you're doing comparisons, you do have to be a little cautious. And let me tell you why. In this particular example, I have July 4th. I'm actually surprised that there's not a bigger difference between my traffic on July 4th and my traffic on July 11th. They're both Thursday, so you would think that the traffic would be fairly similar, but because of the holidays, you're probably going to get a bigger discrepancy there. Now, another thing we can do is compare this week to the same week last year, and let me show you how you do that. We're going to change this. It, it Even though we picked previous period, for whatever reason, Google Analytics switches it to custom, but we're going to pick previous year, so July 7th of 2019 through July 13th of 2019 versus the same times in 2018. I'm going to click apply. Now you do have to use a little caution with this kind of comparison too. If I looked at July 8th, I would, could say, wow, look, I had 51% more users on this year's July 8th than I had on last year's July 8th. But that would be a little misleading because in 2018, July 8th was a Sunday, and in 2019, it's a Monday. My Sunday traffic is almost always a lot lower than my Monday traffic. So you, I really wouldn't be comparing, I'd be comparing like apples and oranges there. Now, I actually prefer to look at a full month's worth of data to do my comparisons. And I can do this two ways. I can either look at the previous 30 days or the last full month. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to turn my comparison off just for a minute so that I can show you um, how you can change your date ranges. You can actually do that three different ways. Um, if you're, especially if you're picking the, the prior 30 days. The first one is I can pick from this drop down menu right here and pick last 30 days. Now, I think this is the easiest because we don't have to stop and say, okay, if today's July 13th, how many days ago was 30 days? So you can see that I've got my, my full month there, my full 30 days there. The second way, and I'm going to switch this back to the last seven days just to show you um, how to make the changes. So the second way that I can pick my last 30 days is actually click on the dates in the calendar. Now, if you'll notice, this... Um, the, this start field has a blue square around it because that means that's the one that we're picking right now. So I'm going to pick, just click in the calendar, June 13th, and then it switches over 
uh, to the end day, and that's July 13th. So I'm going to just go ahead and, and click OK on that. All righty, so that's the second way. I'm going to switch this back to seven days again. Third, I can type in the date field, which I do a lot when I want to look at like a year's worth of data. A lot of times I'll go in and just backspace the, the nine out and put an eight in there. But I'm going to change that back to nine for just a second. So to type the date in, what we would need to do, we can clear that out and just start typing June 14, comma, and I'm going to stop right here. If you notice, there's a red bo um, border around this start box and that's because there's a problem with the date format. So once you finish typing it in, then it's gonna be blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. Now, in addition to looking at the last 30 days, I can also look at the last full month, in, which in this case would be June, and I just clicked on the dates there, and I'm gonna click apply, and a lot of times I wind up looking at both the last 30 days and the last full month just to, to get a, a sense of what's going on there. Now, um, once I've got the date in here, I need to change my comparison date. And it's, like I said, it defaults to previous period, but we're going to pick previous year. Actually, we're going to leave it at previous period first, which is going to compare June to May. And June, I'm sorry, May is the orange field. And one other thing I need to tell you, um, when you're looking at this, um, you can see that this starts on May 2nd. And the reason for that is because there's only 30 days in June. So when you're comparing it to the previous period, that's the, the previous 30 days before that. So if I look at that, I might be just panicking because my traffic in May was higher than my traffic in June. You can see I've had about a 30% drop in users in June versus in May. Now, that would cause me great angst, but remember, we should look at the last year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the comparison box here. And you see, I, before I had picked previous period, and I don't know why Google Analytics does this, but what it does is it changes that to custom after you hit apply. So, um, so just be cautious of that. But what I'm going to do is pick previous year and click apply. Now you can see my, um, I'm going to feel much better about this June when I see that my traffic's actually up about 6%, or actually my users are up 6%. Now, another date comparison that I like to do a lot is to compare this year to date to last year to date. And the way we do that is um, we just change this to January 1st, and I'm just going to backspace that out and type January 1, 2019 through, and I'm going to go ahead and switch June, um, the ending date back to July 13th. And you can see that it, it does some weirdness here. So what I'm going to do is do compare that to previous year and click apply. And you can change your data points. Um, like the data points right now, it defaults to today, but let's switch it to hourly. This literally shows you my traffic every single hour from January 1st through July 13th. The blues this year, the orange is last year. Now, there's really not much that I can do with that data. There, that's just, just, I don't even know what you would try to do with that. But if I change it today, and well, I'm gonna come back today, but let me show you week. You can see things by week. Now, one thing to note is that this last week is probably not a full week. And definitely when you go to by month, you don't even worry about this because this is 13 days versus all these other months or full months. So I'm going to go back to day. And when you look at the day, um, you can see where I have some spikes and some drop-offs. I'll talk about diagnosing spikes and dips in your traffic in my next video, but I want to show you a quick example. Do you see this dip in March of 2018 toward the end? It's on the orange line. And this dip right here in the blue, which is at about the middle of April. Well, I wasn't sure what caused that, but I knew Easter was sometime in that time frame. I checked my calendar, and sure enough, Easter was 
April 21st in 2019. So I kind of suspected that um, this other dip here was when Easter occurred in uh, 2018, but it was several weeks earlier. So I just Googled Easter 2018 and found out, sure enough, it was um, March 31st um, of 2018. Now, there's not really any action I can take on a, a date like that. I can't, like, you know, have Easter not happen. Um, so I wanna, I, I'm not going to worry with trying to figure out what to do there. I'll, I'll just move on to a different spike or a different dip and figure out what I need to do from there. Now, if you want to hear more about how I use Google Analytics or other sources of information to manage my blog, hit the subscribe button below so you'll be notified when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.